大家好，我是奥地利的小胡。今天我们 talk herbs and spices A lot of you guys have been sending me questions about herbs and spices. What is the difference between these two? And what is the difference between dry and fresh herbs? So today I'm making a really short introduction video to the world of herbs and spices, but this is really just scratching the surface because there is thousands of different herbs and spices out there that can be used for cooking. Today I just tell you about a few of them that I often use. Very general spoken, you could say the difference between a herb and a spice is a herb is a fresh plant which will be used, just picked from the plant and then put into the food product to basically give this kind of flavor like the herbs that I have here, some dill, some fennel, rosemary, thyme, basil, I have some tarragon here and some parsley. On the other side, spices would be more likely a dry product that has been gained from a fruit, or a root, maybe a vegetable to produce some sort of a dry spice. Like these fennel seeds that I have here. These are dried fennel seeds. They are considered to be a spice where this, for example, is the fresh fennel plant. Here would be the fennel root and on top would be the fennel herb. So we have fennel as a spice version because it is dried and fennel as a fresh herb as well. Let's start with some herbs. This is rosemary, a very, very popular herb from Italy. It's a Mediterranean herb, so it is mainly found in Italian cuisine. Very popular dish would be just a simple rosemary roasted chicken because it fits very well with poultry and different meats. This is thyme, it is the small brother of rosemary, often combined with rosemary together. It's also a Mediterranean herb, but also can be found in many different French dishes. For example, the French onion soup can take a little bit of thyme. It goes also well with meat, sweeter vegetables, pumpkin, all kinds of dishes. Next one is a very popular Italian herb, fresh, Basil, oh, it just smells so good. Basil is very special because it's a very fresh plant. It becomes bad really, really quickly. One or two days in the fridge, it can already be brown. It's not like this kind of woody rosemary, which can be kept quite long. It also is not as popular for cooking long time because it just becomes brown and loses lots of flavor. Mostly it's used really just fresh like this. You pick a leaf, you throw it on the dish. You saw it many times on pizzas. It's also often used on pasta with tomato sauce. It pairs very, very well with tomato. It has a really fragrant, little bit sweet smell and it just fits with that kind of tomato flavor. Also, for my pesto video, I use this kind of basil and many pestos are basil, rugola, pestos, very nice herb. The next herb here I have is dill. Dill is very nice to combine with fish, like a little bit this special uh, flavor that just pairs with fish very well. Chefs all over Europe just got used to this combination. It's always used fresh, just at the end of the cooking process. If you cook it too long, just one, two minutes, all the flavor is gone. So often it is just at the end sprinkled on top of the fish to give like this extra kind of fresh dill flavor. Another herb is the tip of the fennel can be used same as dill. It looks very similar, but it's not the same. Fennel has a very unique flavor as well, can be used in the same way for seafood, but also paired with other vegetables. It's very nice. Don't cook it too long. Same as the dill, it will lose lots of its flavor. The vegetable, Fennel itself can be cooked a la creme or put in pies, something like this. Fennel is also a Mediterranean vegetable, but now it can be found 
in lots of other places around the world. Parsley is one of the herbs that can be found a lot in China. Chinese chefs, they like to use it for garnish of fruit salads. And to be honest, I've seen it as a garnish on all kinds of different dishes. It's mainly because it just looks very cute, like small and fluffy. It's also an Italian herb, but it has spread all over Europe very quickly. In Austria, we use parsley to garnish anything. It fits with potato, it fits with meat. It's a very universal herb that European people adapted to lots of different recipes. The next one is sage. Sage is a very strong herb. It has really unique, super strong flavor. It can be used for fish, it also can be used for vegetable, it can be used sometimes also with meat. It's very universal, even in pesto, but you always just use a tiny little bit of it, not to overpower all these other herbs. If you buy these kind of fresh herbs, of course, best is you just use it fresh or you buy it maybe in a pot, so you can just take what you need for that cooking session, keep the rest on the plant and it will not spoil. If you buy it and it's not in the pot anymore, best is to use it or you just freeze it. Some of them can be frozen and they taste still quite well. Parsley, for example, you can freeze, but if you defreeze it, it just will not look so nice anymore. Same counts for basil, it's too fragile to be frozen. After freezing, it will not look nice at all anymore and also lose some of its flavor. Another possibility is to put it in oil and basically make something like an infusion of the flavor into the oil. These are just one of the few fresh and popular herbs that I have here today. If you have any other herbs or you know a herb that you have a question about, just ask me. Nearly all of the previous mentioned herbs, they can be bought also dried. Basically, this is just for convenience reason, like this is dried rosemary. So here we have the fresh rosemary, here we have the dry rosemary. Because people not always have access to fresh herbs, they like to have dry herbs at home in the closet for whenever they need them. Basically, dried herbs have the same flavor, but not as strong anymore. Many chefs prefer to use the fresh version, but to be honest, in a household that doesn't cook that often, doesn't use that much herbs, a dry version is always nice to have. I also have some dried parsley, some dried thyme, and one of the dried herbs we use a lot is bay leaf. Lots of people prefer the dry version. Let's talk about some dry spices. Here I have some cinnamon, star anise and cloth. These are very popular in China already. Chinese people like to use it for meat. Actually in Western countries we more likely use it for sweet things. For example, Christmas bakeries, also the glue wine as you saw, I used it. Besides of that, of course, there is many, many other spices that come from different countries all over the world. In India and Middle East, they have a broad variety of spices that they use. One, for example, would be turmeric. This very yellow dried version of a root is used in many, many curries. It also is being used to, for, as a coloring. Actually, the flavor is not that strong. The color is much, much more stronger than the flavor. Another popular dried spice I use a lot is this kind of paprika powder basically nothing else than very dried out bell pepper. There's many different sorts of paprika powder, more sweet ones or more spicy ones. Bell pepper, chili pepper, different pepper variations can be made into paprika powder, chili powder or cayenne pepper. You need to find one that you like if it's more sweet or more spicy and that you can use for many different kind of recipes. I use it, for example, to spice goulash, but it can be found in lots of different Western recipes. Cumin is another dried spice that I really love. 
Basically, cumin has made it everywhere in the world. It has been used in the Eastern kitchen, it is used in the Western kitchen. In Tyrol, we have a national dish, which is just fried potatoes, and the only thing goes into it is onion, butter, potato, and cumin. So I would say cumin is a real international player. A few other spices I have here would be red pepper, I have some coriander seeds which I use for my fried chicken, also some cardamom which can be used also for the glue wine, it has a very strong flavor. Here I have cloves, everyone knows, and also Geneva berries which can be used for, for example, some sauerkraut, it just gives this extra touch of flavor. Overall, you could say that Herbs are more used in classical Western cuisine because herbs were the ones that we actually had, especially Mediterranean herbs that slowly made it up from Greek and from Italy into other Western cuisines like French or Austrian cuisine. Parsley basically has been all over the place. All these dried spices like coriander seeds, cumin, cinnamon, star anise, they slowly came from the east with the trade and slowly also gained spaces in western cuisine. Nowadays, to be honest, western chefs, they like to make all kinds of crazy combinations. They like to cook classical dishes, but spice them up with eastern spices using this kind of fresh and different flavor combinations to make these really special fusion western dishes which of course is just how it should be because the world of food should not know any borders. Love you guys.